So there's a lot of songs that I used to hear when I was young. And uh, all the songs that I sing is old, but, but this one was during my childhood. And uh, I want to sing a little bit of it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Willie Neal Johnson, but I'm a Reggie Bird. You're going to get Reggie Bird. All right. A Willie Neal right. Johnson slow. Amen. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Are we ready, Greg? I used to... Uh, Kind of get over the jitters. <clears throat> I would talk to Gerald before I sing. But now, Greg, you that guy. <laughs> All right. Can't feel them shoes. Can't feel them shoes. Can't feel them shoes. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh Lord.
for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for what you have done and what you continue to do in our lives, God. Thank you for the opportunity, God, even just to be here on today, God, just to serve you, just to worship you, just to fellowship with you, God, and to fellowship with each other, God. God, we thank you for what you have done on this week, God. And God, we're looking forward for what you're about to do on next week as well, God. God, I pray for those who may have been sick and not here today, God. I pray that you would be, be with them, God, that you would heal their body, God. For we recognize that you are the great healer, God. God, anyone that's depressed, God, and anyone that's worried, God, just remind them of your scriptures that tells us not to worry about anything, God. Just remind them that, God, if you take care of the the birds of the air, surely you will take care of us, God. God, remind us that you will provide everything that we need, God. God, we ask that you will continue to be with us during this service on this morning, God. Continue to be with those who are watching on the airways, God. And God, we just ask that you would just be with our pastor on today as we speak the word, God. Use him in a mighty way, God. God, help us to hear what you will have us to hear, God. And God, if you do all these things, we'll give you all the honor and the glory. For we recognize that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, what you going through? Everything's gonna be all right. So we made this day. It's gonna be all right.
um, prosper. He's caused us to prosper even and to continue to grow. Amen. Uh, speaking of that, we're going to have a baptism on uh, next week. Amen. Next Sunday morning. Um, he's just been good. He's just been good. If you have your Bible, we ask that you will turn. Uh, Revelation. And chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, starting at verse 1, and uh, for right now, reading 1 through 8. When you have it, just say amen. We just had a dedication yesterday morning. It was, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. And, uh, the child, uh, he was a year old. Lord knows. Man. <laughs> that boy was tall. He was just a year old. He was tall. He was solid too, though. Oh, my goodness. And uh, just a good uh, showing of the family. It was a wonderful time. It's always good to see people of God, amen, uh, with the faith. That they have um, wanting uh, to pass that faith on down. I mean, and uh, it was good. It was good. But, um, and Lord knows it's time to be dedicated yeah. unto the Lord. Revelation chapter 1 The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must, must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is which was, which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, and which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for another opportunity to come together uh, as we gather together as the sheep of your pasture, as the people of your lands. Uh, Father God, we want to say thank you. Thank you for gathering us by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that has washed us. Uh, Lord God, that has caused us to stand before you somewhere around your throne, even now as we're praying. Father God, we want to say thank you. 
Lord God, thank you for your son. Thank you for allowing him to die. Father God, he gave up his very own life uh, that we would be saved, that we would have the promise of eternal life, that we could spend eternity in your presence. Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you for this living word, Father God. We ask that you would breathe on it, that you would make it come alive before us even freshly now, Father God, by your grace. We're asking, Father God, please, Holy Ghost, stand up in me and you speak a word to your people. Father God, unpack this thing. Make it uh, plain to be understood, Father God. Lord God, to give you the glory, honor, and the praise. You left it behind for all believers. That means you want all believers to get an understanding of it. And, but it's something that only you can do by the power of your Holy Spirit. And so we're praying, Holy Ghost, uh, the spirit of truth, the comforter. We're praying that you would reveal these things to your people. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, obviously, this is a, this is a, in this whole Bible is awesome. Yeah. From the front to back, Lord knows. Um, Old Testament, New Testament, whatever, this whole book is unlike any other book in the world. Um, it's living, it's breathing. Um, it contains, um, it, it describes our God. Um, and um, this last one um, is a great and a mighty book, and um, I take comfort in, um, in what he has said uh, in other places. Um, you know, he says that he'll give you the peace that passes all understanding. Some things you don't understand in the moment. But the old folks say, by and by, mm -hmm. you understand it a little bit better. And it comes to you and you, uh, things that when you were going through it, Lord knows it wasn't comfortable. And, uh, you, you know, sometimes you're asking questions. Why am I going through this? Why am I going through this now? Why me? Um, and you don't really understand. You just, by the grace of God, you got through it. And then somewhere down the line, were able to look back at that time, you see the hand of the Lord, right. you see his purposes, yeah. you understand? Yeah. Uh, but he was able to carry it through, and right. uh, <laughs> I believe that's how, uh, that's how much of his word is, but in particular, this book, he starts off uh, giving us this statement of faith, blessed are those that read it, and blessed are those that hear it. Uh, in the Holy Ghost time, he'll give understanding. Amen? Amen. Uh, but it's still good to go ahead and preach it. Amen. Go ahead and teach it. Amen. Go ahead and take your private time in your own homes and read it. Amen. And uh, as I said, as the Lord sees fit, he'll give understanding. Amen? Amen. Uh, that starts off. It says... The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. It is the revelation. This book is called Revelation. And it is the disclosing, the uncovering, the unveiling. Uh, that means it's as if there is a veil, there is a cover over the things that are going on. And what this book is doing is removing that veil, removing that covering. And in particular, it's removing the veil, uh, the cover over uh, the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. In other words, what's being said is all the things 
that are taking place in the end times, they are actually signs pointing to his soon coming return. It's actually telling us that everything uh, that has been prophesied to take place, uh, many different events, uh, he's actually showing that as we go through this book, he is removing them, he's showing that uh, it's really uh, just revealing our Savior as he's coming uh, and as he is. Uh, it says, which God gave to him to show to his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And actually, uh, it says shortly, and what it means there is swiftly. That means that everything that, it, that we are looking at uh, as they are kicking up and as they are moving forward, they move forward swiftly. I don't know if you've realized, uh, but just the past two years, just the past two years, the things that have taken place, while uh, in many ways it's caused, uh, I'll just say that, in many ways it's caused common folk like you and I, so you don't like the word common folk, but uh, common everyday people, amen, to slow our pace down um, because of various mandates, because of various prescriptions and instructions. It's caused us to slow down, but Lord knows the world, uh, the ruling powers have sped up. If you think about where we were two years ago, and then to see the things that are taking place that are moving so swiftly, so fastly, just as the deacon talked about, uh, you turn on the TV now and all you see is talk of war, war, war all over. Amen. You know how quickly this thing started? Amen. And how quickly it has uh, progressed? And how there's already talk about nuclear weaponry. I'm using that as a picture to tell you if you pay attention, uh, things like that have all over have been going at a fast pace, like picking up. New mandates are being given, uh, new instructions are being given on, uh, really laws are being passed and signed that are determining how we will live our lives here on out. Quickly. Uh, and this is what is saying, these things that are, that are taking place, they are going to flow swiftly. And it says, he sent and signified by his angel unto his servant, John. John, one of the twelve apostles. Amen. Uh, and if you count uh, Paul, one of the thirteen, who bore a record. Who bore record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ of all things that he saw. John is a true witness uh, giving to us. He took it down. He recorded uh, the things uh, that were shown to him. The testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ and of the word of God. I believe uh, that Paul is recording, amen, even the things that are uh, that are in this word that he had before him. And if, if you think about it, primarily Old Testament, that he's saying these things are, that, are, that are being shown by our Lord Jesus Christ in this vision that's given unto me, they are lining right up with Old Testament prophecy all over. And really, if we go back and take our time, that, that is my prayer by the grace of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, and as he allows us and shows, uh, we are going to see uh, many things that are in this book of Revelation. We think about it as a New Testament scripture, but even like many things in the New Testament, uh, they are all well-founded in the Old. Uh, and he says, given testimony of things that he saw, blessed is he that reads and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep the things that are written therein for the time is at hand. Right. And if you 
Uh, it's like we, we've talked about it several times. We have been, uh, we finally, by His grace, completed uh, the book of Daniel. We went through the book of Daniel in our Bible study. Right. And you understand that Daniel was written a good five, five to seven hundred years before the time of Jesus Christ right. walking in this earth. Right. And yet, the things that were written in the book of Daniel, watch this were primarily written about the end times. That means they were primarily written. Look, there's a blessing on this whole word of God. Like I said, it's not like any other word. It's breathing. It's living. That means somebody during any period of these times, in particular after Jesus Christ, any time these past 2,000 years, if you read any part of this word, it can speak to you. Regardless of culture, what, what is the Proverbs? Uh, it's not Proverbs. It's, it's not Proverbs, but it's still Solomon wrote it when he penned it. I forget which one it comes out of, but he said, there's nothing new under the sun. Right? In other words, it, as many times change, as many cultures uh, seem different, it's still all uh, a part of mankind. And as God is God, and he was there before man was ever created. Amen. He's there when what we know as mankind will be over. Yeah. Yeah. Because once he finally comes down and recreates heavens and the earth, once he comes down fully uh, with the Father and the Son taking over the earth completely, that starts a brand new eternity in it's going to be far different from what we know as mankind today. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, what I'm saying is, he is what we're going to look at, he is the first and he is the last. He is, he, he's outside of time. He's seen everything. Amen. And so as such, uh, his word that he has left can speak to any time period. But... Dan, the prophecies of Daniel and this revelation chapter was specifically given for the people that would be living in the end times. And brothers and sisters, we are living in those times. That means those prophecies in Daniel and this book of Revelation was primarily written to us. The time is at hand. Uh, verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, uh, Old Testament, uh, excuse me, in this Bible talk, Old King James, uh, they call that Asia Minor, which is really talking about present day Turkey. In the land of present day Turkey, primarily as the gospel was breaking out and as it was spreading to the Gentiles, it started in Turkey. Know how, how close that is to Israel. Uh, and even as I say that, I also remind you that actually uh, what seems like the very first direction of the Gentiles, uh, this is written at a time uh, after 70 AD. And by now, the church is churches are taking off in the land of Turkey. But actually, we just looked at a couple of sermons ago that actually what looks like the very first direction of going towards Gentiles, of reaching out past the land of Jerusalem, was not north, it was south, further into Africa, because if you remember, Philip was dealing with the Ethiopian youth. So what I'm saying is, so uh, you see early that the gospel message was given to folk who were going down into Africa. Okay. Nevertheless, these churches were in Turkey. And he says, grace unto you and peace from him which is, which was, and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Amen. Amen. Can't tell you a whole lot about it. I just know that God is God. Amen. 
<laughs> Some things I, I just got to stand it. It's what he said. I can't tell you that I understand everything that he said, but it's what he said. And that's what we're going to say. Uh, that's what we're going to say. By his grace. The seven spirits which are before his throne. So there are seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who is the faithful witness. Remember, he was a faithful witness 2,000 years ago, even as he was going through his ministry in the earth. Even when no, all they knew him was as Mary's baby. You know, uh, the child, it, the illegitimate child. Because they knew he wasn't Joseph's. But somehow Mary had him. Before they had all the rest of the children that they knew was Joseph. Y'all won't. Ain't that the carpenter's son? Don't we know all his brothers and his sisters? When he stood up in the midst of the synagogues, they're asking where does he get this learning from? Where does he get this teaching from? Because he was not a Pharisee. In other words, they say, where did he get this authority? With the, that's how people saw him, and yet he was faithful. He said, I can, if, I, if I deny that God is my father, then I'll be a liar just like y'all. Talking to the Pharisees. As they're coming against him and rejecting the words that are coming out of his mouth. He said, no, I'm not, I can't lie like y'all are doing right now. Yeah. Hypocrites, actors, acting like you care so much about the righteousness, yeah. the purity of God's word. Because you talk about that, but really you care more about your own teachings. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He says, I can't deny God is my father. And the things that I'm sharing with you are the things that he has said, yeah. the things that he showed me, the things that I hear him speaking. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He is the faithful witness. Um, and the first begotten, look at King James, the first begotten of the dead. Because he was, said it before, you see in the Old Testament where Elijah uh, there was a boy, amen, that died. And the prophet Elijah, he, you know, he got up there, he, he laid him out on the bed, and it says that he breathed over him. And he came back alive. I believe Elisha did the same thing as well to somebody else. But both of those situations, uh, uh, you see a prophet speaking over, praying over, Unto the Lord, causing somebody to get back up. Yeah. Jesus, you didn't see no man That's right. standing over him to cause him to get up. Because remember, all men and women had gone their own separate ways because after you put them in the dirt, that must be it. Come, come on, somebody. They saw him crucified on that cross and they, they struggled to get him down before sunlight. Because after sundown came, then that would be unlawful. They struggled to get him down and get him in the tomb. By the grace of God, Joseph of Arimathea somehow showed up and offered his own tomb that he had already bought and paid for and had set out. Yeah. It's the wisdom some, some, some of our, our folk have, some that, that, that put away, put away, and put away. And, and so ahead of time, some, I, I just know I've seen examples of it. Uh, even here, that some had put away, put away, and planned so that when they had already went to the place, right. went to the caretakers, they had stuff picked out. Yeah. And, and when I talked to them, they said, I did it, baby, so my, 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 my family won't have to go through that. All right. All right. They already had picked out. This was the case of Jer uh, Joseph of Arimathea, and he already had it bought, paid for, picked out. But when he sees the situation with Jesus, he said, "Gone. He can take it." All right. All right. All right. And so they got him in there. And but after you get him in in, in, the, in the ground, then that's over, right? Nobody. You don't have no record of any one of the disciples standing outside the tomb. <coughs> Praying for him to come back alive. 
But three days and three nights later, you see him. Come. You see evidence that he rose from the dead. So he's the firstborn from the dead. No man can lay claim. Even a man that said that it was by the power of God through them, nobody can lay. Firstborn from the dead. God himself, without no help, rose him up. And they call it a firstborn from the dead because he's actually prophesying ahead of time because you do know when he comes, this whole book of Revelation I said is about the soon coming return of our king. But you do know when he returns, when he comes, he's the firstborn of the dead. But when he comes, all that believe in him will be resurrected. And he is the prince of the kings of the earth. Yeah, you got several kings of the earth, several heads of nations. But our Bible tells us, and the, uh, the old folks sing, he's king of kings. And he is lord of lords. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. You think about uh, you think about uh, your childhood. You think about your parents uh, sitting you down in the tub, washing you down when you didn't know how to do it for yourself. Right. Amen. Amen. You think about the grace uh, of love of God through families when uh, folks had to take care of folks who got down. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it was a child for. A parent. Somehow the, the roles reverse. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it's a brother to a sister, sister to a sister. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And now there's two grown people, but somebody is washing the other one. Yeah. Because they can't do it for themselves. Yeah. He told us that Jesus Christ, when none of us, uh, for my own righteousness, was able to cleanse ourselves from the muck and the miry clay of this sin. When none of us, by our own good deeds, could clean ourselves in order to be able to stand before this almighty, true, and living God who is uh, a consuming fire. When none of us could fix ourselves, the Lord Jesus Christ sat us down in that tub and washed us with his own blood. He was willing to die for us, Deacon Burns, with his own blood washed that sin away. Good God Almighty. This is the one we're talking about. And watched it. It would have been enough if that's all he did was cause us to be forgiven. Cause us to be his children. But not only that, he's filled us with his spirit yeah. and he has made us kings and priests. Yeah. Amen. 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 He prophesied a long time ago when he first met the nation of Israel and he spoke to them. He said, you, go, you are a peculiar people. Yeah. Y'all different from everybody else. By design, that's how I want you to be. You're supposed to be different from all the other nations yeah. of the earth. You will be a kingdom, yeah. a nation of kings and priests. Yeah. He prophesied it, and it's come to pass in, in, through his son, Jesus the Christ. And unto God his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Isaiah prophesied of this. He said uh, his coming servant would come. He said the government would be upon his shoulder. And there would be no end to his kingdom. Come You think about that? Because the uh, apostles that were here on last week, amen, they preached. And they preached good. Yeah. And they talked about how... Jesus reminded us that Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. But please believe it's just as real. It's not of this world, 
but it is just as real as more real than the one that we see right now. Because the one we see right now is the one that we see. But even the things that we see, he says, they're eventually going to pass away. But my kingdom, it doesn't change. The government would be upon his shoulder. Think about it. From 2,000 years until this time, from 2,000 years that started with uh, the original apostles and those that would believe on Jesus Christ from the nation of Israel, started out as 3,000, then 5,000. Amen? And then went on, began to push into the Gentiles. But I'm saying from 2,000 years ago unto today, his kingdom is built off of folk that receive him as Lord and get saved. Amen. His kingdom is a kingdom of saved souls. It started 2,000 years back. And there's been no ending. It's multiplying one soul at a time. You are a part of an awesome kingdom. He says the government would be upon his shoulder and there would be no end to his kingdom. It keeps multiplying and growing. One soul at a time. He says, behold, he comes. And he's coming with the clouds when he comes. Because he's reminding even his revelation. Even in this book that's really meant primarily for us that are in the end times, he's taken us all the way back to when he first, once again, when he first met the nation of Israel. Because if you remember, during the times of Passover, which is soon approaching us, that uh, when he came to deliver them out of the house of bondage, out of Egypt, and take them unto himself, they were led by what? A pillar of fire. Cloud in the day and fire by night. And if you remember when we went through the book of Exodus, it lays record that there was a cloud that was leading the nation of Israel. And it says the angel of the Lord was inside yes. that cloud. Who is this angel of the Lord? That was inside the cloud that was forever leading and gathering and guarding the nation of Israel. Right. It's telling you that self-same angel, he's coming again with clouds once again. Yeah. Coming for his people yeah. in the end time. Yeah. Every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. Yeah. Once again, I can't, I can't help it if it keep preaching of... Uh, keeps preaching the same thing. He says, look, every eye will see him. Everybody will know. When he comes, when he cracks the stuff, everybody will know. And everybody will see him. And then it says, it takes the time to tell you, especially those that pierced him. There's a prophecy in Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 12. And it says that when Christ returns, it says that he is going to enter into the Battle of Armageddon. The Battle of Armageddon is the last great and final battle that takes place before Jesus Christ officially takes the reins and of the kingdom of this entire earth. It's the last great and final battle uh, where uh, Christ himself uh, overcomes the devil as he's ruling through the Antichrist. There's going to be a great gathering of nations from around the earth in the land of Jerusalem. Watch this. And it says that they are gathered around the recently returned nation of Israel that has recently been gathered from the wilderness and from all over the four corners of the globe where they have been scattered. And all these nations are going to gather to fight against Israel. But Christ comes, returns, and fights the battle on their behalf. Zechariah says, in that day, God is going to pour out a spirit of grace over the house of David. That's over the house of Judah, because Judah was the one that was scattered by way of captivity. And it says... 
that in that day, it gives you this understanding, it gives you this picture that after the battle is won, it says they will behold, all of them will look upon me who they have pierced. In other words, at the end of 2,000 years of being banished from the land of Israel, at the end of 2,000 years, you, you in the Bible study, you know after 2,000 years of chastisement, this, now, this is what the Bible says. The Bible says that when they rejected Christ 2,000 years ago, that they brought something on them that was unlike anything that had come before. Because now, look, they already had the sins. They already had sins that all mankind had. But now when God was sending the Messiah who was going to take away those sins... As a nation, they rejected the one who would cause them to be forgiven. So now they had all the sins that they already had. But on top of that, now they had the sins of rejecting God's son. And not only that, but if you remember, some of them in the crowd said, yeah, let his blood be upon us and our children. And so the punishment was God would hide his face from them as a people, as a nation, for 2,000 years. In other words, this particular nation, we're talking about the descendants of the children of Israel, they would not know what it's like to have a God to stand up on their behalf in the midst of other nations. A 2,000 year period of chastisement. Look, we're not talking about individually because ever since Christ came, anybody can receive Jesus Christ, get saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Now he comes to redeem us from every curse of the law. You can have a blessing come on your family that will cause you to be a part. Come on, I'm, I'm preaching. But what has been described is this people as a nation of people, let me say it like this, as, a, as an ethnicity, this particular ethnicity, when compared with the others in the earth, you would not see what looks like God standing up and fighting their battles. And if you don't have God to stand up and fight your battles, that means that you will be a people that is taken, that is lorded over by other people. Is, and that is the picture that he's painted for what his people would look like. So if you look, if you're looking at prophecy and looking at fulfillment of prophecy and who would be these descendants, they look like a people that doesn't have God fighting their battles for them. But at, that's why at the end, when he finally comes. Because that's what this is about. It's about his redemption, his redeeming, his now, that time of, that period, that time of chastisement is over. Now it's time for him to return. Now it's time to turn his face back to them. Now, as we said, it's the book of Revelation, when it's no longer being covered from them, but now it's being made plain to them. And now he's coming back to save them. And as he comes back and stands as their God, in the midst of all the other nations, their God against all the other false gods that have people coming against his people. Their God and fighting that literally fought their battles for them. And now their enemies have bitten the dust. And now they finally have a moment of peace where they don't have other people lording over them. And the Bible says it's like there's a stillness. There's a silence after the dust is settled and it's just them standing in the midst of their Savior. And they're realizing, Mother, all of this could have been avoided. If they had received him way back in the day, 
none of these 2,000 years would have taken place. Everything that their people had been through for so long, they didn't have to go through it. And it wasn't God's plan for them to go through it. But according to their choices, and they are just an example for all mankind, when we reject what God has planned for us, there is a price to pay. But there's an even greater lesson, which is in spite, in spite of our faulty and foolish choices, we serve a God that's already seen those choices and already worked out a plan to redeem us back to his self. He knows that we fall short, and yet his love won't stop him from making peace. And gathering us unto him once again. This is the God that we serve. His name is Jesus. And his precious and holy blood was shed for every tongue, nation, kindred, every ethnicity under heaven and earth that would receive him as Lord. That's all. That's the only reason why we're still alive, y'all. So that we can tell somebody that self-same thing. He can be your God too. He loves you too. He died for you too. Is that all right? I'm good. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I think we need to end right there. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus, all right. In Jesus, all right. Good God Almighty. Hey! Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need a God that's willing to reach down and to pick me up. Other God is waiting on human to make their way up to him. I, you got a God that's different from any other. Was willing to send his own son to die so that we could come back to him. Good God of you. There may be one who does not know Jesus in the pardoning of your sins. Won't you come? Won't you come? There may be somebody, amen, who's watching. And the Holy Ghost is pricking your heart even now. And you've heard these messages before, but today is a little bit different. Won't you surrender? Because he's in your midst. Would you receive Jesus Christ as Lord today? If you would, please say this prayer. Please say this prayer. Please say this prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I believe you sent Jesus. Jesus, I believe you are the son of the living God. I believe you came to cleanse me from all my sins. I believe you died. I believe you were buried. I believe you rose again. And now, Jesus, I am a sinner. I know I fall short. I am a sinner, and I'm in need to have you as my Savior. Be my Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit, give me grace and begin to teach me how to walk in ways that please you. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Let us stand right where we are. Let us stand right where we are. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. We thank you it has been bought and paid for by the blood of your son Jesus. And it is what was in your heart, Father God, for us to be before you. Father God, we say thank you. Thank you, Father God. Let us be led by your spirit this week. Let us be full of thanksgiving as the Holy Ghost takes our mind back and shows us where you brought us from. Lord God, let that fill up in our hearts and be full of thanksgiving unto you and let us run to tell somebody else about your goodness. Father God, if it be in your will, we ask that you would lead us to tell somebody else that you can be their God too. We thank you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face and shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Go in peace today. In Jesus' name, amen.